Hello and welcome. It's Donna Gray here bringing you some live crafting. I'm a stamping up demonstrator from the Northern Rivers area in New South Wales, Australia. Um, I'm on later today, which is totally different for you all because I, um, I had a stamping up convention on. Um, and so because I had a stamping up convention on, it was... Um, it was on this morning, so I was unable to um, unable to join you early this morning. But I'm here now, so that's um, what matters. So hello, Karen. You're always the first one on. Welcome. All right. So hopefully people are getting the notification that I've jumped on and I've gone live. So please, when you jump on, say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. You know the drill. Um, and I wanted to um, just jump on and hang out with my crafty friends again. Hey, Cherry, how are you going? Um, and so... Um, as I said, I've been up since 3 a.m. this morning. So if my eyes look like they're hanging out of my head, that is why. Hey, Miss Wari, how are you going? Um, if, if they look like they're hanging out of my head, that's why. But it has been a really awesome day. I was up at 3 a.m. this morning. It started at 4 a.m. this morning. Um, and it has been an awesome convention. It's a convention for the leaders in our company. So you have to be silver elite and above. And it's called Backstage. And it's all to do with business. And it's all to do with um, um, just getting ideas from other people about their business and how they run their stamping up business and how they share the opportunity to be a part of stamping up. And um, we were all discussing today about how no one can really understand what it's like to be with stamping up until you've joined stamping up. No one can really understand what the experience is like and how awesome it is until you actually join stamping up. Hey, Robin, how are you going? Um, hey, Sue. Yes, I have enjoyed the convention, Sue. Um, so no one can really understand until you're a part of Stampin' Up. And I think for, for most of us, the main reason why we joined Stampin' Up is because we love the products, we love crafting, and we love a crafty community. And that is really what joining Stampin' Up is about. And you get a discount on your products, so that is even better. That's a bonus. But to be a part of a crafting community and a, a, a part of um, a worldwide company that you get to meet people all over the world, you get to, you get to um, create friendships with people, people that join your team, people that join and get the opportunity of enjoying the discount. Um, but enjoying that crafty community and the friendships that you form and the um the support that you get from each other is really really awesome so i just wanted to um to touch on the fact that um it is really um about the crafty community and about um getting together with like-minded people um i did get my nails done <laughs> <laughs> Sue said, you got your nails done, I see. I got my Stamps Club kits out because I've been doing a live video every day and it uh, it has been really enjoyable. I have totally loved hanging out with you every day. I feel like I'm I'm getting to know you all. You, It's the same people that are turning up every day. Please make sure you share it back onto your Facebook profile. If you're on Facebook, share it onto your own timeline. You never know who out of your friends may want to jump on and see some um, crafting. And um, Stampin' Up! is a family. And that is it, Kathleen. And that's, and that's what I, I get. I take away from every time I'm at a convention with Stampin' Up, every time we have an onstage event, a backstage event, anytime we have any of these events, it's the community that, that, um, that you actually really are amazed by. The family that you, and it's a Stampin' Up family that is worldwide. No matter where you come from, no matter um, what country you live in, no matter what state you live in, um, we all love the fact that we are part of like-minded people and part of a big family. And it's a very family-orientated company. It is a direct selling company. I, I won't lie. It is a direct selling company. But it's a direct selling company that cares about the people that are a part of Stampin' Up and cares about 
us as demonstrators and what we do and even our hobby demonstrators we're all part of the family it doesn't matter how you join Stampin' Up whether you join Stampin' Up to just get a discount on your products and be a part of that crafty community whether you join Stampin' Up and then you want to actually share that with your friends like so when I say share it with your friends get your friends to to maybe um have fun with the products, craft with people. It's the togetherness that is a really amazing thing about the company. And then there's other people that join to actually make it into a business. That And we all join the same way. No one joins any different. And I think the, I could guarantee, <coughs> excuse me, I knew I was going to sneeze. I can guarantee that the majority of people, and including myself, joined just to get the discount and to be a part of the crafty community. And then um, you will see that sharing that opportunity with others, sharing the fact that that others um, can enjoy a discount, can enjoy the crafty family, can enjoy the crafty community, um, you realise that it's, it, it's something that we all have in common. Um, so thank you for sharing for the people that have jumped on and shared. So remember um, to go into my giveaway drawers, you need to say where you're watching from. So you need to tell me um, what state or what town in Australia you're watching from. And you need to tell me that you're from Australia. I mean, I can see some of them. Jenny said that she's from Molly Mook and is it Molly Mook? Molly Mook in New South Wales. Um, and Robin is watching from the Hawkesbury. Robin is one of my team members. Um, Sue, you're Tasmania, aren't you? I think, Sue. Um, Janice is from Victoria. Um, Marie, Maria here is saying, hello, Donna. I love the Stampin' Up! community. And that's what it's about. Um, Karen is from Glen Innes. Not too happy that my crafty family asked me to get up at 4 a.m. this morning, Julianne. I know. You're probably feeling the same as me, Julianne. Julianne's one of my team members as well. Um, 4 a.m. this morning it started. But you know what? The beauty of it was that it was actually over at lunchtime, so we could have an afternoon nap if we wanted, but here I am doing a video for you. So <laughs> um, Ruth's from Nowra. Um, Nina is from South Australia. Um, Inky Fingers and Hugs is from um, Ontario, so welcome. Karen, uh, Karen Ashton is from Victoria as well. There's a couple of you from the same area. Um, Janice and Karen, you are both from the same area. So welcome, everybody. And um, I just wanted to let you know, there's a link up in the show more, sorry, in the show more box down below. And there's also a link up in the, the top of the description of this video on Facebook. Um, if you're on YouTube, it's in the show more box down below. I'm having a Zoom craft party and the Zoom craft party is going to be awesome. The cost is $60 and the cost is $60 um, that you get $60 worth of product, okay? So for that cost, you're going to, it's a class that I'm going to be holding on the 26th of September. Um, you can sign up and if you sign up with the link, it will take you straight through um, so you can sign up and register for the class. Registrations, I'm taking registrations up until the 8th of September. So you need to be registered and paid by the 8th of September so that we can hold it on the 26th of um, September. And the reason why you have to pay by the 8th is so that I can order your products and get your products sent out to you um, so that you're going to have your products in time to have the Zoom craft party. But we're actually going to be crafting together. Um, I'm going to show you a few projects um, and you can craft along with me or you can go rogue and you can craft your own way and you can share what you're doing. But we're just going to generally hang out for a good two hours on a Zoom party um, and using the um, Memories of More cards and the Memories of More cards and envelopes um, and so for the $60, you'll get total $60 in product. So you're getting to hang out with me and getting um, me showing you what to do uh, for absolutely free and a two-hour session for free. All you're doing is purchasing the $60 worth of product, okay? So the only way that you can attend the Zoom call is if you have um, purchased the products from me to be able to do the class. So you will find the link up in the show more box, uh, sorry, the link up in the description of the video and you'll also find the link in the show more box um, down below um, on YouTube if you wanted to subscribe. I've already got a few people that signed up already. I only announced it yesterday and I've got a few people signed up already. So if you wanted to do that, that it's not um, limited to any amount of people, the more people, the merrier. 
All right. So um, it will be a fun, crafty get together. Oh, and my camera has moved. How did that move? What's going on here? I've been doing some crazy, um, crazy um, <laughs> things here and my camera has totally moved. Let's let's get that where it needs to be. Okay. About there, and we don't need, oh, something's happening. What's going on here? That's moved. There we go. All right, so now we should be just about right. You still can see my keyboard. Oh, can move back this way. Sorry about this. I've been a little bit wild in my um, <laughs> in my space here this morning doing the online event. Okay, and it needs to go there. Okay, okay, we're straight now. That's crooked. Okay, well, now we're straight. All right, so Zoom Craft Party, as I said. So register um, and um, get on board. All right, so what I'm actually going to do today, I'm actually going to case from um, the catalogue, but I'm, I'm going to change it up a little bit because I don't have some of the components. So when you're actually struggling for inspiration, um, my suggestion is to go to our catalogue. Our catalogue is an awesome um, ideas book, okay? So that's what we could call it, an ideas book. So whenever you're thinking, what do I want to craft with? get out the catalog, go to the page where the bundle is and see what they've created for you. And my idea is case that to start off with and then move on from there. What you need to do is get your product out, start using your product so that um, you can get it in your hands and play around with it and then move on. All right, so I'm actually going to use the e evening, the Evergreen Elegance. Um, did I say evening evergreen? Something like that. Evergreen Elegance and the Snowflake Wishes. I'm actually going to use that because I want to use the dies. And, of course, they're not in there. They're in my box over here. Um, I want to use the dies because I've ran out of um, I've ran out of the snowflakes. So I'm actually going to incorporate these dies. Now these were a set of dies that we had. Um, they're in our annual catalog. So you can see here we've got some um, larger snowflakes. This one here actually just cuts out and leaves the snowflake pattern in your card. Um, so I'm actually going to probably incorporate maybe this snowflake here in place of the ones that we've got. So we've got um, the beautiful snowflakes that you, you've seen in videos that I've been using before, but I've used them so much that I've actually ran out of them. So I'm actually going to case these gorgeous cards here. Now, these cards were um, artisan design team members actually designed these cards and they were absolutely gorgeous and I loved the colour scheme. So I decided that I was going to case that for you today. Um, so you can see how it's done. And I did have a couple of questions about them as well. So that's why I decided that I would jump on and, um, and do a video of these cards for you. So I'm going to get out that first. Now, I'm wondering whether I've got any of that designer series paper left that has the colour that we need. I don't think I have a bit left of that. I'm nearly positive I've used it all. I may skimp in with a scrap or maybe not. Bear with me while I'm looking through my stash here, trying to see if I've got it. I don't have it. Okay. So, oh, I do have it. Okay, I do. Luckily, I have a scrap left. All right. So I'm going to look at um, what they've got here. Oh, there's a pink bit as well. So I do have that. I know I have that. So I've got this gorgeous paper on the... So the backside, this is the Whimsy and Wonder paper, and it's simply gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So we're going to use the reverse side of that and the reverse side of this one to do the first card. And we're going to use polished pink, and we're going to use mint macaron, and we are also going to use some of our watercolour paper. And um, we're going to do a couple of fun techniques here. Okay. So I'm going to need a layer that's going to go on the front of my card. So I'm using the basic white um, thick. Um, hey, Gloria, how are you going? Hey, Deborah. Hey, Cindy, uh, Kerry from Sydney. Hello. How are you? 
Um, Cindy, hello, Meryl from Swan Hill. Meryl, where is Swan Hill? Tell me where Swan Hill is. I look all the time when you say Swan Hill. Where is Swan Hill? Is it in Victoria? Um, crafting with Tracy Hugs from Oregon. Hello, how are you? Matthew from Coffs Harbour, Maria from New Zealand. We've got lots of different people here. But Maria, tell me where, um, sorry, Meryl, tell me where Swan Hill is. <laughs> I look at that every time and I think, I wonder where Swan Hill is. All right, so I'm going to cut that. I need to grab my trimmer out. All right. So I'm going to cut, what have I got here? No, I'm going to do it this way. So five and a half. I might do five and a quarter. Oh, no, I'll do five and a half. I think that bit will be big enough for the other piece that we need. <laughs> a great Friday night for you. <laughs> um, okay, and three and three quarters. All right. So we've got that. And then I need, um, I do need our gorgeous white seam binding, which I have some over here. Grab off my ribbon holder. And normally all the ribbons fall everywhere when I grab one thing, but I may, oh, I did that really well. So I'm going to use the white crinkle seam binding as well. Okay, now I want to cut a layer of, um, of this for the front. I feel like I want to do, this is, um, what is it? Seven inches wide. So I think I'm going to do three and a half inches. I'm just going to cut that in half, three and a half inches. I think that's going to fit quite well. It may be too big. It could be too big. We might need to cut that down a little bit more. Okay, so we might do three and a quarter. And what have I got here? By five, so we might do four and a half. Three and a quarter by four and a half. Let's try that. I think that's going to look all right. Yes, much better. All right. And then we're going to need a piece of that gorgeous polished pink. I'm going to do that probably three by four. Uh, there. And by four. Three by four. Uh, maybe four and a half. What did I do that one at? Yeah, I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do it at four and a half. Okay, so we have that, 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 and that. And then I need a piece of that. I'm going to do it at, can I get two inches and two inches? No, we might do, I'm thinking one and three quarter inches. Let's see if that's going to work in our punch. One and three quarter inches. If not, I'll just grab another piece. Yeah, it will. It will fit well. Okay, so I'm just going to punch a row of tree, two rows of trees out using my punch. So the first thing that I do, and this is what I showed you the other day, um, Janice is cleaning her craft room this morning and found a stamping scrub you bought at your first stamping party over 20 years ago. Oh, my God, that is awesome. Um, Deborah, you can't wait to use this suite. It's such a gorgeous DSP. It is. It is stunning. All right. So I'm just going to get it in there. I'm going to take the edge to where those trees line up. So I'm just going to stamp, punch that first. And it's hard because it's watercolor paper. So punch really hard. Now, the trick to this is turn your punch over, line up those trees on that silver picture can you see there you've got that silver picture there line up your trees level on that silver picture once you've got them level punch again as I said hard because it is watercolor paper bring it through line up the trees again 
and punch. Okay, so we have one gorgeous row of trees. So we'll do that again with our second bit. So we're going to pop it in there. As I said, butt it right up against so you can see where it is. Check it out and punch. Okay, turn it over, push it through, line up those trees on that silver pitcher and punch again. Okay, once again, bring it through, line up the pitcher and punch again. Okay, and there we have two rows of trees. Simple as that. Okay. So we probably only need one row, but I've done two anyway. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take one of my water painters, which I have here. I'm gonna grab my polished pink. I'm gonna squeeze my polished pink into the lid of my ink pad. So I've got a nice patch of polished pink there. And then I'm going to squeeze a bit of water out till I can see a bit of water come. And then I'm just going to pick up some of my polished pink here. I better not sit on my trimmer. I had my trimmer on my seat. Okay, so I'm just going to pick up some of that polished pink and I'm just going to, on um, the trees, add some polished pink on the trees. Actually, I probably should have done some water first. Okay. So just a little bit of polished pink on those trees. And it doesn't matter, you can do it however you like. Squeeze out a bit more water and then go back over and blend a little bit so that you get a bit of a multicolored look. Okay. And I'm gonna do the second lot. I'm actually gonna show you now. So the difference between wetting it first. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna wet them first. I could have probably spritzed with my spritzer first, but I'm just gonna go through and add a little bit of water on those trees first. Okay. And then you can pick up some color and add a bit of color wherever you like. You can pick up some pretty full on color and just no rhyme or reason, just adding a bit of color here or there. Okay. So you can see there, probably the second one looks a little bit better, a little bit more patchy. Um, but I can go into this one here now and not add a lot of water, but add some darker colour. Okay. And then that's going to make them look a little bit more patchier. If that's a word, patchier. Can we use that as a word? Okay. And there you have some gorgeous looking watercolour painted trees. So now to clean my watercolour painter, I'm just going to take my, my chamois and I'm just going to squeeze the water gently and then rub it onto the chamois and you will see that then it comes clean again for you, okay? All right. So now the next thing what we want to do is we want to take our mint macaron and we want to put a watercolour uh, background on this mint macaron. So I'm actually going to take, instead of using that water painter, I'm going to use the other water painter that has the big thick brush. So our water painters come in a pack of three. So they come like this in a pack of three. You get the thick one, you get the thin one, and you get a medium, medium brush. So you get three in the pack, which is really, really good. Um, but I'm actually going to use the thick one now. I'm going to pop that polished pink away. I'm going to grab my mint macaron now and watercolour this background. 
You're work, Cindy's working on Halloween cards. All right, so we've got some mint macaron. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of water so I get a bit of water coming down in that water painter. Okay, so I've got it wet. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet this watercolour paper first. So I'm going to lay a layer of water down with my brush. Now, you may not see that, but it's wet. It's not too wet, but it's wet. Then I'm going to add some water to my ink here. And then I'm going to get a gorgeous watercolour background here. Now, the beauty of this is that it's got such a large brush that you can pick up a fair bit of colour all in one go and get a, a really nice background happening all in one go. Okay, so we've got a gorgeous watercolour background there. And once again, cleaning out that brush, just squeeze the water and onto your chamois. Okay. And we now have a gorgeous watercolour background. I'm going to sit that aside for that to dry. And I'm going to work a little bit on our layers that we have for our card now. All right. So, um, and I need to just gonna grab this towel and wipe my bench so I don't have too much water there. All right, so I'm going to pop those two, three things aside. So now I'm going to work on this. So this one here, they've distressed all the edges. Now, you can actually get a distressing tool. I don't use a distressing tool. I just use my scissors. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to run the blade of our scissors down the edge of our designer series paper. Now, don't be, don't sneak on this, really get into it, really chop in. And if you get those torn bits, that's totally okay to get that look. Okay, the thing is that I find people run into the biggest problem is they're too, too gentle when they go to do this, really get into it, okay? If you're too gentle, you're going to go like this and all you're going to do is create a furry edge and that's it. You really want to get that really nice, um, distressed, tattered look and, and grunge it up a little bit, okay? All right, and this is not for the people that like the nice, neat and tidy edges. This is not for them. If you don't like the distressed look, that's Okay, you can pop it on your card without distressing it. Hello from now. How do I say that? We've got Baskabel Ivy, Boscabel Ivy. How do I say Codgenup, Codgenup, Western Australia? Is that where you're from? <laughs> Did I find out where Swan Hill was? Merrill, north between Bendigo and Mildura. Well, there you go. I know every time I see that, Merrill, every time I see you're from Swan Hill, and the reason why I suppose I think about it is I used to go water skiing on the riverbank at a place called Swan Bay. So that's why I think every time I see Swan Hill, it reminds me of where I used to go as a child, where we used to go water skiing, um, and it was called Swan Bay. Okay, so for this one, what they've actually done is torn um, the designer series paper. Now I need to see, yeah, okay. So they've torn the designer series paper, but they've got it that you can see like a white edge. Now, what you've got to do is you've got to test your designer series paper to see which way that white edge. I just tore this bit here. Can you see how that white edge appears on there? So you have to test your paper of which way you're going to tear it to get that white edge to appear. And the white edge is good. I, we need to see that white edge because it makes it more authentic. So we're just going to tear that bit of paper. I know some people struggle with tearing their designer series paper. They're like, I don't think I can tear it. I, that just goes against everything I do. For these awesome cards, it looks fantastic. You get a gorgeous white edge. You get a gorgeous torn look. It's going to go with your distressed layer. It's going to look really, really nice. All right. So we've got that. We've got that. 
Now they've popped a little bit of this ribbon just down the side here. So I'm going to take my um, seal plus and I'm going to pop a little bit of seal plus on the bottom and a little bit of seal plus on the top. And I'm going to take my ribbon and we're going to line that up just along the edge of this piece of designer series paper. So we sort of want it fairly over close to the edge and straight down there. Okay, so there. And see the crinkled ribbon really goes with this look. Karen said, I have difficulty with distressing paper, but not anymore. You love the look of it too much. I know. It is a really nice look. And it, it just, I don't know, it changes the look of your cards. It really does. All right, so we've got a little bit of ribbon going down there and we're going to be able to pop that straight onto there. So I'm actually going to just take some liquid glue. Hey, Jacqueline from Perth, how are you going? All right, so I'm just going to pop some liquid glue. Now, Karen, this video is for you because, Karen, it was you that was asking me about um coloring the trees and things so I hope that this is going to explain to you because I know you loved those cards hopefully this is going to explain to you how you can create this card okay so we've got that now I'm going to have to it's not going to quite look the same but I'm going to have to use the gorgeous um die out of my die set which where did I put the die set after all that there okay so this is the biggest die that I have. So we're going to have to incorporate this as our die because there's no other bigger die. So that's that's the one that we're just going to have to go with. Um, and I'm just going to grab a bit of our basic white cardstock. And I might grab um, my cut and emboss machine. I'm thinking I might do my little mini cut and emboss. The mini cut and emboss is so super cute and it fits on your table really well. If you don't have a cut and emboss machine, it's a great entry level machine to start with your die cutting because as you can see, these dies will fit. Anything that will fit on this size platform will go through the machine to be able to cut out some dies. So it's fantastic that you can pop it on your desk. You don't have to have a big cumbersome machine. And it's great for doing those one or two die cuts that you're going to be doing with your crafting. So we're just going to run that one through. So I need to cut two. A warm afternoon for you over there. Well, it's actually been quite chilly. I mean, I was up super, super early. As I said, I was up at 3 a.m. this morning. And for the good part of the um, business convention, I was freezing. I was cold as, but I had my trusty mink rug that Stampin' Up! Um, gave me for being a leader in the company um, at last on stage, I think it was. Um, so I had my trusty mink blanket and I was, um, sorry, my cardstock is bigger than, <laughs> bigger than my um, platform. Okay. Um, yeah. So I had my trusty mink blanket and I was sitting here with my mink blanket over my, at one stage I had it wrapped around my shoulders um, when I first, oh, well, sort of around 5am, it got quite cold. I always find it gets cold once the sun starts to come up. Okay, so I've got two of those dies. I'm just going to bring in my trusty die brush. Now, you can get this die brush attachment for your take your pick tool, and it comes in super handy. My suggestion is have two take your pick tools. Have one with... Um, your putty end on it and one with your brush tip on end on it because it saves you having to undo them <laughs> if that makes sense all right so we've got our gorgeous snowflakes happening okay now the next thing is we need to stamp some of the um sentiments which what have they done there May the beauty of the season bring you joy and warm 
memories. All right. So they've done that stamp and they've cut apart the um, sentiment. So I'm going to show you how you can do that. So we're going to take a piece of polished pink cardstock and we're going to use our Versamark and we're going to use heat embossing. All right. So um, I'm going to use my white embossing powder, my Versamark ink pad. I'm going to mount up that stamp, which is that one there. Yep. And I've been doing this a bit lately, actually. Um, I've been having a fun time um, cutting up my sentiments. When you stamp your sentiment, then you cut it into pieces. And it's been super, super fun doing that. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to grab my embossing buddy. Um, oh, if I can find him. There he is. Um, and before you ask, no, we don't sell the embossing buddy anymore, but you can actually buy them online from other craft places or you can use um, some sort of talc powder. All it is is powder and it takes away the um, oil residue from your fingers. Um, you love the look of this card? No worries. I'm glad that um, I, I love the look of it as well. I'm going to stamp this a couple of times. I'm going to do it twice just in case I don't I go a bit wonky with my cutting or whatever, but I'm just going to cut it apart twice. We'll see how we go. So white embossing powder. So you're going to see the joy of heat embossing here with white on pink. It's going to come up really, really well. Okay, so we're just going to sprinkle our powder. So we've used our sticky... Versamark ink. We've used our embossing um, buddy so that um, we make sure that it, the embossing powder doesn't stick anywhere where we don't want it to stick. And we've shaken off um, the excess powder. Okay. So I know that some people, for, for most people, you probably know how to heat emboss, but there could be somebody that's watching at the moment that has never heat embossed or has never tried to heat emboss um, because it was always um, something that they didn't know how to do it. So therefore they steered away from it. It's going to plug in my heat tool there. Now, my suggestion is um, heat up your heat tool. So we've got two heat settings. We've got a, a number one setting and a number two setting. Always heat up your heat tool, but be very careful. It gets very hot. So it is a tool that you can burn yourself quite easily. So make sure you um, always point the air away from you. And then I heat from underneath. Now, the reason that I heat from underneath, you're going to see the wow factor. You're going to see how this goes beautifully white. Look at that. Can you see that? So the reason that I heat from underneath is to make sure that I don't dislodge any of the powder that's that's on um, my Versamark ink, but it also will, the heat will curl your card. Can you see how the card is curling? But if you curl your card down and under, when you go to stick it onto your project, it will sit really nice. If it curls up the other way, you'll have corners that are very hard to, um, to get them to curl down the way you want them or for them to sit nicely on your car. So that is the reason behind me heating from underneath. And I've done it this way for years. It's just something that I do. And I don't have to wave that heat tool around anywhere. I just hold it and watch it turn. Okay. So you can see there, you've got some gorgeous sentiments. It's very brilliant, bright white. And that's actually what you want when you're using white as a sentiment. You can use our Whisper White ink pad, but if you want a true brilliant white, always use heat embossing. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this sentiment apart. So... Um, we're going to come in here with our scissors and we're going to cut these apart. Now, probably um, for most people, if you've got longer bladed scissors when you're going to do this is probably the best so that you get a really nice, good, easy cut, um, cut sentiment. Or I'm just going to see if this will work. I think it will be too big. I thought we might be able to do this. Oops. But I think it will be too big. 
I seriously think it will be too big. I think it will cut too far. Yeah, there's too much gap. All right. So you're just going to have to eyeball it and you're just going to have to um, try and do it as well as you possibly can and as neat as you possibly can with your scissors. Okay, so we're going to cut that straight across there. Okay, so we've got one there. Now we're going to cut further here. Straight down there. Um, let me see. May the beauty of the season. So of the season, they've cut in one go. So we're just going to go through. My suggestion is to just keep squeezing the, the blades of your scissors and go through in one go. Try not to change the direction of your scissors. Um, now, I've actually cut it down into there that I'm not happy with that. So I'm going to grab my second bit and I'm going to, um, what have we got here? Bring you joy. Yeah, I'm going to cut my bring you joy out of this piece. So we've got that. I'm going to go through and cut that nice and straight. Bring you joy. May the beauty of the season bring you joy. And warm, so we'll do the end warm there, and warm. Memories, so we're just going to cut the word memories. That one there looks all right, so we'll just cut it out of there. There, and there. And we just need to level up the top. No, I'm going to cut the word memories out of here because I've I've just about cut the um the um dot above the eye off. So I'm going to go again. So that was the reason behind me stamping two lots is so that if you cut into one where you shouldn't, you've got the second one to be able to do it. Okay. There we have it. Okay, so we've got our sentiment cut out. Hey, Lynn, how are you going? I cut so well, Cindy, you think? I was thinking I was doing it quite crooked, but anyway. Um, it could be something to do with being a hairdresser and scissors, but, yeah. <laughs> I do struggle cutting little sentiments out, though. I do struggle with it. And, and I suppose I'm probably a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to the width of them and how straight they are. But the idea of, um, of the whole process is that um, it's not real straight. That's the whole idea of the process. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put this together. So we're going to have our watercolour piece. We're going to layer that piece in underneath. And that's going to sit on the front of our card like that. It's still, I feel like it's still too wide, but we'll go with it. We'll go with it. I feel like it's still too wide. I feel like I need to cut it down a little bit. So I'm just gonna, sorry about this. <laughs> I'm just gonna trim it down a little bit. I'm gonna take an eighth of an inch off that side and an eighth of an inch off the other side. And that will make me a little bit happier, I think. Let's go like that. Yes, that looks better. So we can see more of that pink in behind. All right. So that's actually how that's going to go on the front. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to glue this one down. Actually, no, I'm going to glue that piece on top first. 
So I've got it sitting exactly where I need it and then we'll glue the whole lot down. So um, I want it over a little bit more. Let's go like that. Oh, lay it down there and there. Okay, that's good. All right, then I'm actually going to pop that up on dimensionals because I think it will look nice popped up. Personal choice. <laughs> hey, Susan, I didn't see you jumped on there. How are you going? Doing, I'm doing a bit more lockdown crafting. I'm going to have you all spoil. You're going to be all when, when expecting me to be on every day and I don't think I can keep this momentum up full time. <laughs> it's been great, but, yeah, <laughs> you like the back of the paper. <laughs> I know. The paper is gorgeous. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to take off those dimensionals sorry, the backings of those dimensionals. And we're going to pop that on just like that. Okay. Now. We're going to pop our cute snowflake on here. So I'm just going to, um, I'm going to just pop a little bit of Seal Plus there for that snowflake and pop the snowflake right there into that. Okay, now comes our trees. So our trees are going to pop on here. So we're going to stagger the trees a little bit. So we're going to have one lot of trees in behind and one lot of trees in front. Um, I think I'm going to do it that way, the lighter trees in the back. Okay, so I feel like I'm going to be able to cut them off here. So maybe that one there. there. And I might leave that one there like that. Okay, so I'm just going to pop a little bit of Seal Plus just on the back. And you won't need much just on a couple of those trees. Or you could use your liquid glue. It's totally up to you. But I'm going to line those up um, just there. Okay. And then the next lot, we're going to line up staggered in front. Okay. So you're going to have a cute lot of trees. Actually, probably could have put those up a little bit higher. And even maybe my snowflake could, oh, can I? Can I or can't I? Yes, I can. See, this is the beauty of Seal Plus. We can pick it up and move it. Okay, so I'm going to do that and that. Right, stick it down. Uh, was it this one? Yes, it was. Okay, it's better. So just a little bit of um, Seal Plus on the back of those trees. And then we're going to stagger those over the top. Just like that. How did I get my nails done, Susan? I did them myself. <laughs> Don't look too closely. <laughs> All I can say is look from a distance. <laughs> And I've been, this afternoon, I've been doing my daughter's nails as well. So, um, yeah, we've been having a bit of a, a nail time. Okay, so I'm just going to pop that into some Seal Plus as well. Up there like that. Okay, and then I'm going to grab my little mini dimensionals and we're going to... Um, glue these on so this is what I'm, I'm saying if you don't have exactly what is in um 
the like if you wanted to case something and you and you don't have exactly what was in um the actual card just change it up like I, I looked and I thought I don't have any more of those snowflakes left oh I have the snowflakes dies I'll just cut some snowflake dies out and they can do as the snowflake so it's going to look similar but not quite the same and that's okay all right so let's pop some dimensionals on the back of all of these so I'm going to use my little minis because they're going to be the great size for this sentiment so we're just going to pop some on the back of all of those which bear with me I don't do well with minis I'm not <laughs> my my big fingers don't do well with little mini tiny things but we will get there So I'm excited that I actually felt like crafting this afternoon for you all. I was like, will I, won't I, will I? And, you know, every time I jump on here, it makes me feel so much better. Um, I was sitting in my recliner with my coffee, with my legs up, like, and I'm like, you know what? Don't be so lazy. Get out there and do a live video and hang out with the crafty friends. So that's what I did. <laughs> It's paper crafting, we can go wild. Exactly. Because um, Susan's saying, I've never seen pink pine trees. You know what? Some people used to say, um, when I coloured flowers blue, oh, but do you have blue flowers? I mean, God forbid. I just, whatever goes with crafting, it doesn't, um, doesn't bother me. As exactly what um, Susan just said, we can go wild. We can. Okay, so this one here, May the Beauty. Of the season, where's of the season here? There, of the season. But cutting apart your sentiments, we're not using the whole sentiment that was on there, um, but it still makes sense. It's still, it's still getting the idea across. Um, but you can cut them up and and it just, I don't know, it changes the whole look, I think. Bring you. May the beauty of the season bring you joy and warm memories i just thought it was so cute and i love the color scheme too i think and warm memories there you have it and just to finish it off of course we need some Rhinestones. Oh, I want those ones because it's got big ones in it. You like square cut sentiment, Cindy? Yeah, looks good. You were crafting this morning, Jacqueline, until Miss Granddaughter 8 came and wanted to make two cards. Well, you know what? I think that's awesome that your granddaughter wants to make cards. Awesome. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so I'm just going to pop some of these gorgeous sequins around, I mean, rhinestones. <coughs> oh, okay, tickle in my throat. Okay, there. up there and I'm going crazy with those rhinestones but doesn't that just look stunning and now the last and final thing of course um Sue will say I need a bow <laughs> isn't that right Sue <laughs> and I'm actually going to do a double bow because um just to beef up this ribbon this ribbon is really 
soft and um, it's gorgeous ribbon. You can colour it. It's a, a definite uh, staple in my craft room. Um, but sometimes to beef the bow up to make it um, a little bit uh, more sturdy, I tend to do a double bow. And you'll see me do it a lot with twine. Um, I find that it's just a really... It's a good way of getting um, a thicker looking bow. And all it is is just two pieces. You still tie the bow like normal and then you just spread your little loops out. So I'm just going to tie my bow. Oh, if I can. Oh, now the struggle is real. See, I don't tie perfect bows all the time. <laughs> And this um, twine is, uh, sorry, this um, ribbon is really, really pretty because it's got that crinkly look to it. So it's not meant to be like full on neat and tidy like a bow normally is. It's meant to have that nice messy look to it. So I'm just going to pop that cute bow on there and I'll do that with some glue dots. So I just pop a bit of a glue dot in behind and then pop that bow on there. So as you can see, a simply stunning, easy, gorgeous card to make. A little bit of watercoloring, a little bit of distressing, but how gorgeous is that card? I, look, honestly, I have fallen in love with them. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. Do you want another card? Do you want a second card? Do you want me to do one more? Want to do this one here? We could have a go at that too. <laughs> what do you think? Give me the thumbs up. If you want me to do another card, give me the thumbs up. Hit that like button. Give me the thumbs up and let me know whether you want to have another card. <laughs> Jenny saying, yes, please. <laughs> so all of the products that I'm using are out of our July to December mini catalog. Uh, they can all be purchased right now. They're all available in my online store. You will see the link to my shop in the show more box down below. You will also see my website up here, stampingwithdonnag.com. Now, one thing that I do ask people, if you're going to place an order, please use my August host code. If your order is under $250, please use the, the that host code. That allows me to be able to get product to give away as prizes on my videos. So um, I really urge everybody to use the host code. We used to be able to ring up and let Stampin' Up! add the host code. They've told us now that we're not allowed to. So please make sure you reach out to me um, and use that host code. All right. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do, um, I need just a piece of basic white to stamp our trees on so we'll get a combination of those trees uh, okay they've done those tags okay so let's do that tree there I think it's that tree and I'm going to have to work out the um is it going to fit on there? Yeah. I'm going to have to work out the measurement of that piece to go on the front. So we're going to do this. We're going to have a piece along the front there that's going to go about there. So I'm going to look at that as the edge measurement. I'm just going to roughly guess what that's going to be. So I've got my finger there. Let me see what that's going to take it to. Let's take it to four and a half. Four and a half. And looking at that. Okay, so I'm going to line that up on there. I sort of need it about that height. <laughs> Do you like the way I'm guessing this? Hang on, about that height. About there. So maybe... Two and a half. Oh, maybe two and three quarters. Let's do two and three quarters. Up there like that. Yep. Okay. So we're going to stamp with our polished pink and our tree. 
Now, how they've actually got this gorgeous look here is stamping full strength, second strength, and third strength, okay? So I'm just going to show you how to do that with your ink. I'm going to grab a scrap piece of paper to pop underneath me, which I had that for the embossing. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to um, ink up and we're going to do full strength around here in the middle like that. I'm going to do another one full strength just here like that. I'm going to ink up and I'm going to do half strength. And we're going to do that there. Okay, so this is how we're going to get that different look of the trees and a half strength one there. Okay, then we're going to do stamp off twice and we're going to do some in behind there. I'm going to stamp off twice and up in behind there. I'm going to stamp once. I want a little bit stronger look down through there. I'm going to stamp off once and in there, off once and in there. Okay, so can you see how we've got that variegated look with our trees? I might even stamp a full strength one just over on that edge like that. Okay, so we've got a gorgeous look of trees. It makes it look like you've got trees in the forefront, trees in behind. Um, so it's a great way of creating like a forest look by just using first generation, second generation and third generation stamping. So you, this is a way of using more out of your ink pads as well. So getting a different look, you can get three different colors by first, second and third generation stamping. So um, it's a great way of getting a lot more out of your colors. Now, when, um, when I have people that are joining Stampin' Up and they're trying to work out what their starter kit is going to be, I always say to them to go for the brights if they haven't got any ink pads, to go for the bright inks um, because you can always stamp off and get a lighter color but if you go for the subtles they're subtle they're not going to be any darker they're subtle so um so if you're thinking about purchasing a starter kit um it's a great way to choose the brights as um, a selection for your crafting um, so now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to tear along the bottom of this like um, the other one. So we're going to tear towards us to get that white look again. And when you're tearing, try not to be too neat with your tearing. Make sure that you're tearing and getting a few different ups and downs in that torn look. Okay, so you've got that gorgeous torn look there. Now, they do have a die in there, and I feel like... Um, I feel like they probably cut this out of um, one of our dies. I'm, I'm thinking it's the contour dies. So let's see. Thinking, oops, and I'm just throwing them everywhere. I'm thinking it's out of the um, con, uh, scalloped contours dies. So see how they've got this one here? Is it this? Yes. I feel like they've done that. So I'm actually going to cheat here. I'm going to do, just use a scrap piece of um, basic white. And I'm going to cut that edge out of that scrap piece of basic white, okay? So I'm going to have to bring in the large cut emboss because of the size of that die. So talking about the starter kit at the moment, we've got a really awesome special on that when you join Stampin' Up, oh, look at that. There's a snowflake. <laughs> when you join Stampin' Up, um, I, that's probably one that I lost the other day and I couldn't work out where it went. When you join Stampin' Up, you can um, purchase $235 worth of product and you only have to pay $169. Plus you get a bundle, a select bundle for free. 
And I did have that bit of paper floating around here on my desk, but um, Lord knows things have happened today and I've probably moved it, which I have. Um, but there's a select choice of bundles and you can message me and I'd be happy to send that through to you and let you know what that select choice of bundles is. Um, but you can get a free bundle as well. So it's an awesome time to join and just uh, be a part of a crafty community. I would love to have you as part of my Wild Heart Crafters. There's quite a lot of my Wild Heart Crafters on here today. Um, and we're an awesome bunch of girls all over Australia. So it's a great way of being a part of a crafty community and it's a great way of getting your products at um, a cheaper price. Um, Karen says it makes it look like it's misty. Yeah. Hey, Kay, how are you going? Thanks for joining. Hello, Kathy from California. Thank you for joining. All right. So there we have the gorgeous scallop piece that we need. So I have cheated. I actually do think that they've cut that piece out of that, but I'm actually going to cheat and just pop that along there. All right. What else are we going to do? Oh, I need a snowflake as well. So I need to grab another piece of that basic white and cut another. Oh, no, I could use the snowflake I just found. <laughs> it's a little bit mangled, but we can fix it. I'm sure we can fix it. Look at that. No one would ever know. The poor thing was stuck to the bottom of my cut and emboss machine. But look, we can straighten it out. No one would ever know. Yep, we can use it. What do you think? <laughs> Hello, Minnie from California. Hello, how are you? What time is it, Kathy and Minnie? What time is it in California? Tell me what time it is over there. Okay, so I need to cut this long enough that it's going to go underneath there. So I'm just going to grab my snips and cut that to the right length. Now, is it going to sit there at the right length? That looks pretty good. I'm going to cut it right there. So I'm going to go like that and then like that. Okay, so we're going to have that bit there. That's looking good. And we're going to cut that one like that in under there. So there you go. So that's how I've got that cute little piece. 11 p.m. Okay. Well, that's not too bad, I suppose. If you're a late night person, if it was 11 p.m. for me here, I would be in bed sound asleep. <laughs> All right. So we've got that. Now I need a tag. So we have those gorgeous tag guys. I'm hoping I can find them. Let me see. Bear with me while I find them in amongst all of my dies here. I know I have them. Tailor made tags. Okay. Tailor made tags. Oh, I think it's this one. What do you think? Yep. Okay. Is it that one or is it this one? Do you think? Let me see. It's this one, I think. Yep. It's going to be smaller. I think it's this one. So I'm actually going to cut that out of our watercolour paper because we need to watercolour it anyway. And I've got a piece of watercolour paper left here. Now, those um, are called the Tailor Made Tag Dies, number 155563. And um, they are awesome. They've got a whole heap of different tags that you can do, they are absolutely awesome. They are a definite must in um, your craft stash. All right, so I can bring in the mini cup emboss for that one because that little tag will fit in my mini machine. You have to admit, the mini machine is so cute. Like it looks so, so cute. Okay, so let's cut out a tag. I can probably fit it that way. So I'm actually gonna cut that. So I can fit it in my machine so I don't waste any of that 
paper. Okay, so I'm just going to run that through. <laughs> it's 2.08 a.m. Inky fingers. Oh, my God. You need to be in bed asleep. What is your, your real name, Inky fingers? Tell me what your real name is. Do I know you? <laughs> it's always a mystery when you've got someone that has a name like that on um, on YouTube. <laughs> You're obviously a demonstrator from Ontario. So do I know who you are? All right. So I'm going to grab um, my Aquafina again, wherever I put it. There it is. And I'm going to grab my mint macaron. Okay. Squeeze it into there. And we're going to once again layer it up with a little bit of water first. So grab that water and get that water to come out through first. And then we're going to pick up our ink and do a nice little background there on our tag. Just like that. And it allows our, um, our snowflake to show up a little bit more as well. Hello, Janine from Brisbane. How are you? Thank you for sharing. All right. Okay. So we've got that happening. Now, the next thing we need to do is do our sentiment again. So I'm going to grab this piece of polished pink I have up here. And the sentiment that we're going to do is it's friends like you that make this season so wonderful. Okay, so it's friends like you that make this season so wonderful. So I'm going to stamp that one twice like we did the first time so that if I make a bit of a mistake when I go to cut it out, I've got a second one that I can, that I can uh, use. So... I'll grab my embossing buddy again. Okay. <clears throat> and my Versamark ink, which is sitting under the spare piece of um, color paper. Okay, so let's ink that up in our Versamark ink. So once again, sticky white, uh, sorry, sticky clear Versamark ink. And that's what our white embossing powder is going to stick to. And it stays sticky for quite a while. So, um, so you don't have to panic about how quickly you're going to um, pop your powder on. I mean, don't take all day, but you don't have to worry about how quickly um, you pop your powder on because it does stay sticky for quite a while. So we're going to, hey, Angie. So we're going to use um, our white embossing powder again, sprinkle it on, tap off the excess. And because I've used my embossing buddy, you can see I don't have embossing powder everywhere where it doesn't need to be. So um, that embossing buddy is a, is a tool that I use all the time, no matter what. I think it's sad. We need to sandbox it with Stampin' Up! to bring it back because we definitely, I, I bought up, I've got, three of them I think and this one that I'm using I've had this the whole time I've ever crafted so um I mean it's well used and well worn but I do have two extras waiting in my embossing um supplies in case that one finally has its day so heat tool once again second heat setting so number two heat setting and I heat from underneath And isn't that awesome to see that change color and go beautiful and smooth and creamy. I never tire from seeing that embossing take, take hold. It is honestly the wow factor of crafting. When I learned to heat emboss, 
I tell you what, I think I was in heaven. When I learned how to heat in boss, I was like, I am in craft heaven being able to do that. All right, so one of the things is to make sure it cools off a fair bit before you start going to cut and things because um, it can tend to be still quite sticky when it's quite hot. All right, so now we're going to cut those apart again. So we need everything out of it cut apart. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how well I go with one lot because I might be able to make a second card like this if I don't muck up my sentiments. I'm going to get in here so I can get right at it so I can do it good. So hopefully I'm just going to do one sentiment and I'll be right. Okay, so I'm going to cut there. Nice and slow, take your time. Gently squeezing. Okay, so how have I got to cut the words up? It's friends like you that makes this season so wonderful. Okay, so so wonderful is one lot there. Oh, I feel like I'm going to have a hard time with the friends here. Can I do it? Did I do it? there it's not too bad there can you notice I've gone quiet I'm trying to cut straight. <laughs> so I've gone quiet. <laughs> Who else is like that? When you're trying to cut, you go quiet. Can't talk. Can't talk. I'm trying to cut. There we go. It's friends like you that make this season so wonderful. There we go. <laughs> you're that way too Cindy yeah I know I'm like and very rarely am I ever quiet I mean like <laughs> your, your tongue sticking out too Susan <laughs> maybe mine was <laughs> I didn't check but maybe mine was too you never know all right so this is starting to come together quite nicely okay so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run some um Seal plus along the bottom edge here for that little scallop bit to join onto. So seal plus along the bottom edge. And then I'm going to be able to line that up. Now, actually, a silicon mat will come in handy here. Where is my oh, there it is? I was say, where is my silicon mat? Silicon mat will come in really handy here because you can press it down and you're not going to stick it to your table, which is really good. Okay. So line that up where you want it to be. So about there. Okay. So the thing is I can press that down and then I can peel it up because it's actually on my silicon mat. All right. So we've got that. Um, all right. So I'm going to pop that on there. So I'm going to glue this one down straight away. Well, straight on to, I mean. So I'm using my Seal Plus because it's on my desk and it's handy. You can use liquid glue too if you like. We're going to butt that up to the side here because everything's going to butt up to this side. Okay, so I'm going to do that. There. This here, I'm actually going to pop up onto some dimensionals.
oh, I think it's got a ribbon on there. I can't see in the picture. I don't know whether it's got a ribbon or it hasn't. Not quite sure whether it's got a ribbon on there, but we'll see. <laughs> Maybe I need to check with that next time, Susan, <laughs> see if my tongue was sticking out. I mean, you know me, like if I wasn't talking, maybe it was. <laughs> Very rarely do you ever hear me not talking. But when I've got to concentrate, sometimes, I know it's hard to believe, but sometimes I do. What time is it in Australia? It is 4.20 p.m. in the afternoon on Saturday afternoon, Nancy. 1.19 a.m. in Oklahoma. What are you doing still up? I mean, God, I need, I'm going to have to go to bed really early tonight because I was up at 3 a.m. this morning. So I've been going for a fair while today and i am got to be back up again at 3 a.m. again then tomorrow morning. Okay, so I'm just going to, oops, glue that. I'm going to have it fairly up the top like that. Okay, then we have this that goes on here like this. So I'm just going to grab a piece, uh, a bit of, um, I don't know whether I want to do the, the snowflake that way or no, I think the foily way looks better. I don't know whether I want to do it the matte way. What do you think? Shiny way? You probably can't see. Shiny way or matte way? Which way? Let me know, shiny way or matte way. While, you, while you're thinking about that, I'll pop my little mini dimensionals on the back of my sentiments. 220 in Perth. <laughs> oh, Susan, you're cracking me up. Makes me look really intelligent. <laughs> shiny side up. Shiny side up. Okay, people are saying shiny, so we, we can do shiny. Okay, so I'm just going to pop some dimensionals on the back of these little sentiments. Oh, oh, get on there. This little fellow wants to be cantankerous. There. I told you I'm no good with little um little things, am I? <laughs> Many dimensionals cause me grief. Do you know this is the same sheet of mini dimensionals? This is the same pack of mini dimensionals that I've ever opened. I have never opened a second pack of mini dimensionals. Can you believe that? Do you believe that? I very rarely use mini dimensionals. You needed a lockdown lift today. Well, you know what, Susan, anytime you want a lockdown lift, just message me. I'd be happy to help. <laughs> Although, mind you, I should be getting you out of your lockdown, um, lockdown miseries because, you know, I've given you something to do every day. <laughs> it's in pooped in. <laughs> oh, dear. You're making me laugh, which is awesome. Okay, so I'm going to pop that on there like that. And then these sentiments are going to go on top. It's friends. Where's my friends? It's friends. Okay, there. Where's like you? There. But don't you think um, cutting these sentiments apart, don't you think it just um, makes uh, the way this sentiment is? Like on both cards, it just makes the card have that different look about it. That make this season... Let 
there. I've thoroughly enjoyed making these two cards today. So wonderful. There. I feel like they actually put a ribbon under there. I do. I, I wonder, can I pull that up? Do you think I can do it? Do you think I can pull it up and add a ribbon without wrecking it? I think I can. Well, I can probably even just pop the ribbon in. Okay, I'm going to grab the ribbon. I'm going to pop a glue dot on the end of my ribbon. Let's see if I can do this. Where there's a will, there's a way. Glue dot on the end of the ribbon. A glue dot on the end of the ribbon and glued just in there. Okay, there. And this is going to be the hard part. This is going to be the next thing, trying to get this to wrap in around through under there and glue on. Let's glue it onto the dimensional. Because we can. <laughs> You've just seen me do something that you would think, why in the world would you even bother trying to do that? But I can't have a card without a ribbon. <laughs> I so can't have a card without a ribbon. And it needed that ribbon. It really did. Although, you know what? It's got a ribbon up there. I'm going to put a ribbon in both. <laughs> This is going to be one of those avid cards. We're all avid, right? Aren't we? We're totally all avid. I'm, I'm sure of it. Type it in the comments and let me know. Are you an avid crafter? And an avid crafter means you want to throw it all onto a card. You want to put as much as you can. You want to embellish it as much as you can. You want to put as many layers as you can. Using die cuts. Who out there is with me? Raise your hand. Tell me that you're with me. Can you tell I've had lack of sleep? <laughs> lack of sleep makes me blurb on. And I can't tie bows with lack of sleep. Have you noticed that? Has everyone noticed that this afternoon I'm having a hard time tying bows? But that's okay. I got it in the end. Took a while, but I got there. Okay. You can buy more bad for the budget. <laughs> you dry emboss everything. Kay saying avid through and through, I know you are, Kay. <laughs> the more bling, the better, Karen. Yeah, I agree. We're going to have two bows on this card because we just can. <laughs> yeah, actually, to tell you the truth, though, Janice, I didn't do any embossing. I could have embossed a layer or I could have embossed the card base maybe to add a bit of texture. But I didn't get an embossing folder out on my desk this afternoon. So, okay, here comes another bow. I am bow challenged this afternoon. It could actually just be the ribbon because the ribbon is so soft. It could be the new fingernails. They could have something to do with it. I don't know. Something's going on with my bows. I'm struggling with the bows. But we eventually get there in the end. Oh, and we did. Look at that. You would not think out of that mess that that bow was going to work, but it did. If it's your first time you've watched me and you're watching me live and you're lurking in the background, I'm not, I don't mean to be horrible, but if you haven't said hello, please say hello to me and let me know where you're watching. If you haven't commented on one of my videos before, please comment 
because I love meeting new people. I love all my avid followers, but I also love meeting new people as well. So don't be scared. We're a great crafty community and we like hearing from new people. So if you haven't had the courage, plucked up the courage to say hello, say hello if you're watching this replay back later on. Also remember to comment and say hello because I like to see the people chat to me. I love it when I get more comments on my videos after it has been live. I like the fact that people catch the replay and let me know that they're catching the replay. Hello, Michelle from Canberra. How are you? Michelle, is this the first time that you've commented on one of my videos? Welcome, Michelle. Whoever said less is best, Susan. <laughs> Cynthia, okay, I'll admit it. Cynthia, are you admitting that you've lurked in the background and never been able to, never been game to say hello? Well, welcome, Cindy, Cynthia. I'm so glad that you did because you know what? That's what it's all about. We're into this crafty community. Michaela. So we've got Michaela and we've got Cynthia from Canberra. Uh, sorry, Michaela's from Canberra. Cynthia, where are you from? You've caught me live a couple of times, Cynthia. Oh, sorry, Michaela. Oh, dear. Cynthia, this is your first time on with me and you're from Indiana, USA. Meryl, you're a lurker. Well, welcome, Meryl. I'm so glad you have said hello. And you know what? In future, chat with me. This is what I love. I love getting together and crafting with people and chatting with people. <laughs> Can you tell I'm a bit of a miss have a chat? Have a team member. Kathy, are you on here? I don't think she is. I have a team member and her and I, we're both Miss Habit Chats. When we ring each other, the, the phone calls are at least two hours long. <laughs> Jacqueline, uh, Donna, why am I only a few comments? Okay, so, um, so Jacqueline, what you need to understand is this is going out to quite a few different platforms. Um, and the different platforms is I've got three different places on Facebook that it's going to, and I've also got YouTube that it's going to. So whatever platform you're on, you're only seeing the few comments of where you're on. I'm seeing everyone's comments. I'm seeing everyone's comments from Facebook, from YouTube, and the three different places on Facebook as well. Cindy, you love chatting with me. <laughs> and with everyone else. I know it's fun, isn't it? Maria is saying hello to all the new viewers. Yes. So if you are new and you haven't watched before, by all means, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can join me or catch my replay any other time that I'm on. Because once you hit the subscribe button, plus on, on YouTube, there's a little um, a bell notification. If you click on the bell notification, it will ask you when to be notified. If you say all, you will get notified every time I go live or every time I upload a video. If you're on Facebook, um, please follow my page and um, like my page and you will get notified when I go live as well. All right, so now I'm just going to pop a few rhinestones around because, I mean, we're an avid crafter, so we're definitely going to pop a few more rhinestones around and, and make this card go to that, that wow factor level, even though it's already at the wow factor level, but we can add more. Exactly what Susan said, the more the, the better. Embellish away. <laughs> so I'm so glad you've chatted with me, Michaela, Cynthia, Meryl. Um, so, so happy that you you had a chat with us. Isn't it so much more fun now having a chat with us? Okay. I might pop another couple just randomly around, maybe another one down here. So it's definitely for the avid crafter. What do you think? And I think what would finally finish it off, totally finally finish it off, who would agree? A little bit of wink of Stella. A little bit of wink of you and me. All right, so 
I'm just going to squeeze my wink of Stella. Hopefully I'm going to squeeze it. I think that one's empty. We'll try the next one. Oh, that one looks like it's got some in it. No, it's pretty empty as well. <laughs> I think I need a new wink of Stella. But anyway, I'm going to see if I can. You know what I'm going to do? Are you ready for this? You're going to see something that's really, really um, going to make you go, wow, I didn't know you could do this. I'm going to take this little black plug out of in here. So you can, um, maybe I could get my take your pick tool under it. Uh, maybe, uh, I'm going to make a liar out of myself now. Oh, there we go. Okay. So <laughs> I'm now going to have it everywhere. I'm going to use, this is some alcohol. So I'm going to pop some alcohol into here and fill it up with some alcohol and pop that black plug back in. <gasps> Whoops. And have you just seen all the wink of Stella that just went over my desk because I overfilled it? <laughs> okay. Um, towel. That's what I need, just a towel. Now, this is how you get more out of your wink of Stella because you can see how much glitter just came out of there. Okay. So all I've done is put some alcohol in there. Oh, don't lose the lid off my alcohol there. And I'm now going to have a wink of Stella pen again. Now, let me see if I can squeeze some out of here now. Now, admittedly, it's going to be, um, I'll get that purple towel out of it. It's going to be a lot, um, look at that. Yes. And we need someone here too. Or there. Look at that. Okay. So I have made a lovely mess of my desk, but that's okay. We can wipe it off. But can you see that shine now? Okay. Now that was an empty wink of Stella, a total empty wink of Stella. And I put a bit of alcohol in it. And now I'm going to have a wink of Stella that I can use again. And you can, you can fill it with um, alcohol quite a few times. And um, when it stops being really shimmery is when you need to get another one. <laughs> but that has now, look at that. Look at that shine. Spritzing with wink of Stella. Everything has to have wink of Stella. Totally everything has to have wink of Stella. So you know what? Sadly to say, um, any of those, any of this um, items can be purchased through my online store. So today I've used the Evergreen Elegance stamp set. I've also used the beautiful um, Tree Border Punch. I've also used Snowflake Wishes, but I just used the dies out of um, the Snowflake Wishes, which are called um, what are they called? So many snowflakes dies. And I also used the gorgeous um, tailor-made tags dies as well. So I will update the information on the video here. I will update um, the post and in the YouTube um, show more box down below, I will put a list of supplies. It'll take me a little while to do that. I'll jump off and um, do that in a little while. Oops. Every time I try to go back to... <laughs> <laughs> my camera so I can chat with you. It turns a video off. I'm so sorry I did that. <clears throat> but thank you very much for spending a little bit of time with me this afternoon. Um, I'm not quite sure whether I'll be able to do a crafting session tomorrow because I do have another seminar that I need to do tomorrow afternoon after my business um, convention as well. So I will try and pop in. If I get a chance, I will try and pop in, but I'm not, I can't promise anything. So if I pop up, I pop up. So that 
that means you've got to be subscribed to my channel to make sure um, you don't miss out. But um, but thank you. you. You fixed your wink of Stella too. Well, well done, Susan. I'm glad that I've helped you out with something there today. All right. So thank you very much for spending a bit of time with me. As I said, just remember you can purchase all the items in my online store or you can, during celebration, you can earn a free item with a $90 um, purchase. You can earn a free item out of our celebration catalog. Um, there's also a link up there if you wanted to subscribe to my email list to get the free weekly PDF tutorial. I, I choose one of my projects out of my videos and I do a free PDF every Tuesday that gets sent out. So for people that are overseas, um, that will be um, Tuesday will be your Monday. So make sure if you want to subscribe, make sure you subscribe before Tuesday or your Monday so that you can get that. And um, also don't forget the class that I'm doing, the Zoom class. Now, I will actually do an option for this. If you live overseas, if you live out of Australia, I will actually do an option. It will cost $20 and you can join the Zoom call if you like um, online. I will send you the link. But it is going to be at 6 p.m. my time. So it will be um, this time in about an hour and 20 minutes that's the time it will be. So it may not correspond with um, the time that you're going to be out of bed. But anyway, um, so lovely chatting with you. And thank you very much for the new people that said hello. That has been awesome. And um, everyone have a wonderful weekend. Please stay safe. Please stay, stay well. And I will see you all next time. Bye for now.